Come on, put those hands together, put those horns together. Let's make some noise if you're ready to worship. Come on, make some noise. Come on. Let me hear those horns. I can't hear nobody. Where y'all at? There you go. Let me hear that horn now. Hey. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and give Him praise. Lord, you're worthy. Now we give you the praise. Come on, praise me. Hey. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Now we give you the praise. Now we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. 
say this without here. Say neighbor. Neighbor. If you ain't sweating, <laughs> you ain't sick. Look at your neighbor.
Somebody wave your hand if you believe whatever you want from the Lord. If you're in the car with your family, high five your family and just tell them whatever you want from the Lord, it is yours. You just got to believe that. I thank God today for another parking lot service. I thank God for you guys are really true Christians. In to come out in this kind of heat but you know what it is hotter in hell i know i wasn't supposed to say that but how many y'all know i might as well come on out and worship god i actually saw on television where people were running to the beaches and all they could get out there is a tan in the sand tell somebody i already got a tan i'm getting so when I go to the beach, I got a great big old umbrella all over me. This is a day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Thank you everyone who's joining us today. Uh, there is a tremendous word from God. It's been tremendous worship. If you are a worshiper, I want you to leave this service and have to go home and take a shower. I want you to worship God. No need to coming out here standing around looking cute. Make sure you got your mask on and understand what's going on. But we are going into the word of God. Can you pray with me right now? I'm going to pray. Father God, by your own sovereign will, you have granted us the privilege of worship. The devil tried to stop worship with this virus, but he didn't realize that we were going to come out anyhow and give God some praise and glory. As a matter of fact, my God has been too good to me for me to stop worshiping him now. So I thank you, God, for everything that's going to be said and done. Get your glory out of this situation. God, take me back into the wells of your wisdom. Let it not be me, but let it be you that speaks this word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite your attention to Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. That is in the New Testament. If you're following me over there, Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, I'm going to read 10 verses in your hearing. Amen. Somebody blew the horn, let me know they got it. Here we go right now. Beginning at verse 1, the gospel according to Luke, chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing by, 
and passing through. And there was a man called Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, because he was short in statue. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed the sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus reached the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down. And, wel and he welcomed Jesus with joy. Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for today I must stay at your house. So Zacchaeus hurried and came down and welcomed Jesus with joy. When the people saw it, they began to murmur. He's going to be the guest of a man who was a notorious sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, See, Lord, I am now giving half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will give it back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to your household because he, is, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Turn to somebody you're standing around. Tell them, it's time to climb a tree. Look at somebody else. Tell them, it's time to climb a tree. If you're at home, just let somebody know it's time to climb a tree. I'm going to speak from that thought just for a few moments. I want you to zero in on this very familiar story of Zacchaeus. But I want you to hear what the Holy Spirit would say to us today. Uh, one of the undeniable privileges and blessings that every child of God has available to them is that we have the ability to handle, go through, and survive some terrible situations in life. We are survivors. As a matter of fact, I know somebody listening to me today is a survivor. Some of you have survived a divorce. Some of you have, the, have survived a terrible disease or a life-threatening health issue. Some of you have survived the loss of a loved one. Some of you have survived losing your job, went into financial ru ruin, but you held on to God and somehow God brought you back. And you know the good thing is when you lose your job and you got God, you never miss a meal. And you never go through a struggle that you cannot handle. Some of you even will admit that you went through a period of time where your emotional and mental survival was at question. Meaning that crazy had visited your house. Where the folk ain't ashamed to say crazy came on me. But aren't you glad God knows how to restore your mind? How many of you know I'm sitting here in my right mind because God ran crazy away from my life. So we are survivors and just in case there is somebody here who does not realize the many, many, many times God has delivered you. The Bible lets us clearly know, don't you dare stand out here like you stood on your own two feet. It was God that brought you this far. Isaiah tells the children of Israel in Isaiah chapter 40, listen to this. He said when they were trying to figure out how they made it and how they were going to make it, he took them to Isaiah chapter 40, which I'll take you to, verse 20, leading on verse 40, going into verse 28 to 31, which says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint it not, neither is he weary. There is no searching to his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and those that have no strength, he increases their strength. Young men shall get weary and fall, even the youth shall fail. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You're going to mount up on wings as eagles. You're going to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. 
you're going to have the joy and strength of God. I know I got somebody out here that can tell you there's a benefit in waiting on God. He will strengthen you. But then there's other ways God kept us. When life got overwhelming and friends disappeared and nobody was there. I heard the psalmist say in Psalms 46 and 10, somebody didn't realize it. You were struggling. You were moving around doing all you could. Then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost blew in your house and said, be still. Anybody ever heard God say, be still? And no, I'm God. Somebody's glad today. God got your back. And when you be still, good things happen from the Lord. Now, I'd like for just a few seconds, all of the survivors, I want you to celebrate your surviving. Just take a minute. All right, that's good. That's good. Let somebody know. I, I know. I know it. But watch this. With all that being said, and I do want to celebrate the survivors. Please pay attention to me. But I came to tell you today by the voice of the Holy Ghost, God did not just save you to be a survivor. He did not save you to just sit around talking about I survived and you didn't move and go higher or get better. What I'm saying is just being a survivor is good because we all got battles. Thank God we can survive. But God said to survive and stay where you are. To survive and not go on to your destiny. To survive and live off of those same old testimonies from five, ten years ago. There ought to be some struggle going on in your life right now where you can say, I'm not going to settle for that. I'm moving on to get something out of my life. All I'm telling you is God said to stay where you are. Please hear this, somebody out here. You're struggling. He said, it is dangerous. With all the power I have, all the blessings I have for you, you survive and all you want to do is stand around and celebrate what you've been through. What about what God has for you now down the road? That's where the blessings come from. Uh, matter of fact, Muriel Guzman tried to give this message to her daughter, Veronica. You see, Veronica was her daughter who had started living with a young man named Juan Camacho. And one night, Mario received a terrible text, a horrifying text from her daughter. The text said, I am sorry, I just killed your daughter. You see, what happened is when Veronica and Juan Camacho started living together, at first, Mario, her mother, loved Juan Camacho, but then she found out he could be violent. So she warned her daughter. She said, look, don't you stay there and let him hit you. Leave. If he hits you, leave. Now she was a good old Spanish mom, so she said, if he act like he gonna hit you, leave. And she told him, you don't have to stay there and keep getting beat. Well, I need you to know, that Veronica didn't listen. Every time her mom told her that, she would just tell her, Mom, I'm a survivor. I'm going to be all right. Well, the beating started. Collarbone broken. Black eyes. Busted lips. And every time, once, once a month, she would go to the emergency room for a shoulder bruise or something. And every time her mom said, when are you going to leave? She said, I'm a survivor. I'm going to be all right. Well, the day came. She told her mom, I'm leaving. It's Tuesday. I'll be at your house Tuesday night. Well, Wednesday morning, she had not heard from her daughter. So she actually texted her. And the text that came back was not from her daughter. It was from Juan Camacho. He was sitting in a pool of Veronica's blood with her lifeless body next to him. He sent a text, I just killed her. Then he called 911 and turned her in. But you better hear this. 28-year-old Veronica Rodriguez is dead for one reason and one reason only. She survived, but she stayed there. I wish I could tell you this was an isolated incident, but did you know that every day in America, three American women are murdered by their husband or their boyfriend? And all of them survived, but they survived and stayed. And that's why God came tell me to tell you, when you survive, it is time to move from where you are and get where God wants you to be. That's where this story of Zacchaeus, go to your Bible, comes in, Zacchaeus. You know the story. Zacchaeus was this short man. Zacchaeus, 
Uh, somebody say, well, he was a tax collector. How is Zacchaeus a survivor? I need you to know how Zacchaeus is a survivor. He was a survivor in the basic sense of how we all have to survive because of all the problems he overcame in life. Quiet as it's kept, you sit next to somebody who will tell you there's been some days of hell. There's been some days when I didn't know how I was going to make it. But when I got up in the morning, somehow I found the Lord still had my hand. Is there anybody know what it means to lay down at night? Not know if you're going to get up in the morning, but in the middle of the night, the Lord sent some angels to visit you and bring you out of your mess and bless you with another day. And you realize if it had not been for the Lord, I don't know how. I would have made it. So Zacchaeus is a story of a tax collector. The text tells us of some of the many problems he had to overcome. Watch this. First of all, he was short, small of stature. That means he got teased all the time. That means that he was short, small of stature. That means that he had to deal with his own self image, his own insecurities. You know what? We try to look tough on the outside but even though you're not short all of us got some kind of short falling some kind of insecurity that we have to deal with and sometimes do you know your worst problem has been you and not God God redeemed you bless you change you and you still living in the past I wish I had a church here that understood what I'm saying so Zakia. First of all, was small in statue, getting teased. I don't know what you got teased about, but you had to overcome it to be who you are. Secondly, he was a, he was a Jewish man who was collecting taxes for the Roman government from his own people. So he was hated by the Jews and laughed at and despised by the Romans. So he had, to un he had to overcome all the talk. He had to overcome being alone. Nobody wanted to be with him. And one of the worst spirits in the world is the, spe is the spirit of rejection and being alone and wondering how you're going to survive. Is there anybody here that knows there's no danger, there's no punishment sometimes like being rejected and have nobody to talk to. I am so glad that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother because there are days that I wouldn't have made if I didn't have God to hold on to. You know the story. Some of you say, well, I don't care what other people think about you. You lying. It hurts when folk reject you and talk about you. I still got a hurt in my life from when I was in sixth grade. When I was in sixth grade, and I still remember it. I'm talking about sixth grade. Y'all know how old I am. I still remember sixth grade. I was going over to my buddy's house. We were doing a science project for the science fair. We were building a robot. And I had to go to his house, and sometime he'd go to my house. I didn't tell y'all my buddy was white. So when I went to his house, his mom was so nice, and she would say to me, uh, James, sometimes I looked up and I said, wonder what's going on. She said, James, it's time to go home. I look outside. It was early. I don't know why she's sending me home. Then some days she said, James, you want to stay for dinner? And I stayed there till it got dark. I didn't understand until one day there was a knock at the door. We had stayed longer that day because we had really thought we were going to finish our project. I'll never forget this. And the mom, and, and I heard a knock at the door, and his father came in. I had never met his father. His father looked and saw my jacket and said, whose jacket is that? And the mom, the mom I could hear the mom out there saying, honey, now don't get upset. And, and she ran into the back. The father came and looked and saw me and my buddy there. I'm waving high, and he walked out. Before he got four, st four steps out the door, he looked at his wife and said, what you doing with that N-word in my house? Get him out of my house right now. I looked at my buddy, his face went down. I was scared by that time, I was only in sixth grade. He said, I mean, get that N-word out right now. And I remember going to the door. And when I got to the door, this nice mother, who I loved, who I thought loved me, looked at me and said, now James, you can't come back to my house no more. That hurt. Don't act like what people do to you and say to you doesn't hurt. But we gotta make sure that we don't let it Tell us how to live. As long as I got God to stand on. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was not only a tax collector. Zacchaeus was not only with some insecurities. Lastly, he was rich, had a house full of things, but he was not happy. Here's what you need to understand about Zacchaeus. He was not happy and he decided, I've survived all those things. And you know what? I ain't staying here. 
I wish I could talk to somebody individually out here. Some of y'all need to realize the only reason you're where you are is because you don't want no better. Help me somebody. Zacchaeus said, I'm not going to settle for the life I am. Can I preach to you and tell you, don't you dare settle as long as you got a God who has all power in his hands. Don't you settle when you can get on your knees and ask God to step in. Don't you settle. And some of you have settled in to a life of pain and abuse and struggle when God said, I got more for you if you just decide that you're not going to settle. Somebody say, I'm not going to settle. I'm not settling when I know God has more for me. As a matter of fact, Zacchaeus, the text didn't tell us why, but it said with all he had, he wanted to see Jesus. Now, the text didn't tell us why he wanted to see Jesus, but in my own mind, I knew why he wanted to see Jesus. And I know some of y'all know why he wanted to see Jesus, because once you've been touched by Jesus, there is nothing like a touch from God. Once God has helped you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. How many know the reason? I'm out here in 90 degree weather because I got bit by the Savior bug. He's a Savior that passeth understanding. He's a Savior that gives joy. He's a Savior in the midnight hour. I'm only here because nothing has been as good in my life as God. And so we go to the third or fourth verse of our text. Look at it. Zacchaeus said, the text says, so he ran he wanted to see Jesus, so he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a tree. Wow. He ran ahead of the cloud and climbed a tree so that he could see Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit impressed upon me to teach you today. Some of you want to change in your life, but it's time to climb a tree. Tree, climbing a tree is a metaphor for I'm not ready to quit. Amen. Climbing a tree is significant or symbolic of I know I'm not going to stay here for the rest of my life. Climbing a tree is saying I know I got a better destiny and since I'm still alive and breathing God's air, this is not the end of my life. I wish I had one believer that just understood this is not the end. I don't know how long you've been there, but can you at least admit God got enough power to take you to the next step? You got to make up your mind. This is not the end of my life. This can't be the end when my God can bring me through. So Zacchaeus climbed the tree and he let us know. As I go to this text, I'm going to give you a point. Watch this. He let us know. None of us have never, since we've been blessed by the blood of Jesus, you left natural and went to supernatural. How do I mean that? Check the Bible. Romans 8, 37. You know what God says? God never calls us conquerors. No, I'll check the text. He said, no, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Isn't that something? God said, my people aren't just conquerors. They are more than conquerors. Are y'all with me? God never wants us to settle for limits. How do I know that? Because Ephesians 3.20, he wants, God said, I'm a, I'm a limitless God, and I want y'all to take the limits off what I can do. How do you know? Because the text says, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, come on, somebody say above, more. Then you can ask that what kind of God is that? He wants to do more than I can ask him to do and more than I can think of him doing. And finally, God never tells us, well, pastor, you don't know how hard my life is. Man, fiddlesticks. That, that's a preacher cuss word. Fiddlesticks. Do you realize all us been through stuff? Everybody sitting in here done had to deal with stuff. Apostle Paul told us what God expects from us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, 14. He said, forgetting those things behind, I press toward the mark of the high call. Oh, look, some days might just be your pressing day. Today ain't all lovely. Today ain't all joyful. But you got to get out of bed, press your way into a good day that God has made for you. All right, these three points down. We're almost done. Watch this. Don't settle. Want more for your life. That's the first thing Zacchaeus is going to teach us. Don't settle. Want more for your life. Second thing Zacchaeus is going to teach us is want 
Don't settle. Want to see God's power. Don't settle. You got to want to see God's power. And thirdly, don't settle. Here's a good one. You got to want it now. Don't you leave this service going back, moping in your house, talking about how good God is, but you won't step up and climb a tree and get to the next level of your life. Those of us who made it had to go do things other folk wouldn't willing to do. But God blessed us. It's time to climb a tree. So look at the text. So where we are right now, Jesus is going into Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, you're familiar with the 19th chapter because the 19th chapter is where they cried Hosanna, Hosanna, and laid palm branches down. He had set his face to go to Jerusalem, meaning that he was going there by Passover. Now watch this. He went through Jericho because he wanted to get there eight or ten days earlier so he could beat the Passover. You know why? Because his last stretch, I like Jesus, in his last stretch of going to the cross, he wanted to do more miracles. He wanted to bless more people. So he said, if I get there early, I'm going to die, but I sure can bless some folk on my way out. Y'all don't hear me. That's the kind of God we serve. Then he said he went through Jericho. Jericho is the same Jericho that was coached by Joshua, but it's a different Jericho now because Jericho in Jesus' time was a great city. It was a powerful city. Jericho means the city of palms. It was upgirded by its palm branches, and it was it was a beautiful city when you walked into it. It was like uh, it was like going to the Florida uh, uh, of our day, uh, minus the coronavirus. It was going to there. So it was a beautiful city of palm trees and blessing and recreation. You can imagine it was a cool place. And yet Jesus went through Jericho. And he went through Jericho and he ran into a man named Zacchaeus. I told you already Zacchaeus was a tax collector. My first point, Jesus said, you got to don't settle. You want more for your life. You got to want more. Listen to me, somebody. And when I said want more, you're about to miss the, victor the victory in this text. If you don't understand that wanting more is not talking about stuff and money and cars and things. How do I know that? Because in the 18th chapter, if you go back one chapter, you'll find out Jesus wasn't dealing with the spirit of greed. He talked about greed already. Remember there was a rich young ruler came running to Jesus to justify himself. He said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, uh, go and keep the commandments. Love your father and mother. Do this. He gave him all the commandments. Well, the man was proud. He jumped up and said, I've been doing all of that. Jesus said, well, go sell half of everything you own and give it to the poor. The Bible said he left and went away sad. Do you realize he left and went away sad because he had more faith in his things? Than he had in God. If you start loving things more than God, you're gonna miss the supernatural power of a God who can deliver you. How many y'all know things will miss, things will go, money will leave, people will leave, stuff will fail. But as long as I got God and I got my hand in God's unchanging hand, where my survivors at again? Won't he take you through a midnight hour? Won't he take you through a bad experience? Won't he bless you when nobody else can? So Zacchaeus learned. Y'all, it's, it's good. I, I got to turn the Bible on. It's good because the, the iPad has hit a temperature, so I just got to preach. So Zacchaeus found himself in a situation where he had to learn how to trust God. Even though the circumstances of his life was bad, he had to learn how to trust God anyhow. God wants us to have more. So he wasn't talking about just greed because he's going to deal with the key in a minute. But greed is not going to help us. I know where I am. Watch this, guys. Because I done found out that I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Matter of fact, it was Peter who said to us, Lord, where else am I going to go? Anybody feel like that? I don't know where else to go if I ain't got God to go. If I don't have the Lord to go to, I don't know where else to go. As a matter of fact, when I was younger, I grew up in a Baptist church, in a good Baptist church. And in that good Baptist church, you always had those good old deacons. We didn't have fancy praise and worship like we got out here now. We had devotions. Come on, y'all. We had the deacons that would come up front. Sometimes they would come look. Sometimes they start, start the song up in the wrong key and wrong beat. But they was getting down. But can I tell y'all something? One thing those old deacons could do. You know what they could do? They could pray. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Man, they, they, they put a chair. They put a chair up there in the front of the church. 
and they kneeled down, and that old deacon would get to moaning, and when he got to a heavy place, he'd grab his ear and say, now, now, Lord. And when it got real good to him, when he got done praying, he had to take his tie off because he knew then he was ready to go. But every good Baptist deacon understood this. This was in every good Baptist deacon prayer. Come on, you've been to church, you know it's true. He would always start his prayer off with, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, tell me where can I go? Now, I was younger. I didn't understand it. But I bet you I know what he was talking about now. How many of y'all know I can stretch my hand? Oh, Lord, I got a church out here. How many? I don't need no church. I don't need no music. I don't need no other people. All I need is God by my side. So God was not talking about that. He was talking about, watch this down, write this down. He wants you to be more, do more, help more, and you will have more. I'll say it again. Be more, do more, help more, and stuff will drop in your lap. He was trying to teach us that every good person that wants their life to change have gotten out of the baby stage of blaming everybody else for their problems. The first person I realized, and if you didn't realize, I'm going to help you out today. The first person, when you really want to climb a tree, the first thing you realize is, I want to be a better me. I'm not happy with how I'm still sinning. I know y'all don't left me now. I'm not happy with the things I still do. I'm not happy with the stuff going on in my life. I just want to be a better me. Anybody ever got on your knees and said, Lord, I don't know how I messed up again. How am I living for you? You blessing me and I'm sinning anytime I want to. So, so you get in the mirror. If you really want to climb a tree, the first person you got to change is like Mike said. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. You better look at yourself because you can't change the world till you change yourself. So he's telling us that we got to want change. And if you look, every person who God blessed, watch the more, wanted more. They weren't satisfied. They wanted more. For, come on, you know what I'm talking about. How about Moses? Had been a prince in Egypt. Now he was in the desert labeled a murderer. He was a sheep herder. He was old, 80 years old now. He could have gave up. But Moses said, my life ain't over. Oh, I like that. My life ain't over. Matter of fact, can I get three people that say, my life ain't over? I don't care what a bit, my life ain't over yet. Oh, that's good, Holy Spirit. My life ain't over. Here's what he said. Moses, now everybody knew Mount Horeb was the place where God existed. But nobody went there. But Moses still had enough anointing in him. When he saw the fire, he said, I'm going to turn aside and see this fire. Watch this. And when he turned aside, that's when God called him out of the burning bush. I'm just saying, maybe you don't have more because you haven't turned aside so God can call you. Maybe you're not in the place where he needed you to be so he could bless you. And that's why he can't give you. Oh, I'm preaching right now, y'all. That's why you don't have what you have. Because just like everybody else, you won't turn aside. And Moses got blessed. Everybody who got blessed started with themselves. They said, Lord, I need more in my life. Not only that, it says that he wanted to see Jesus. I told you he was a tax collector. And if you want more in your life, you got to get this out of your brain. It meant that it says that with all he had, he wanted to see Jesus. Tax collectors were the most hated men because not only did they work for the Roman government, but they could set their own taxes. See, Rome would tell them how much to take from that region. And you got to remember Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. He was an administrator over a whole set of regions. And it said that he would just, he could tax the people what he wanted because all over what the Roman government meant was his. So everybody knew he was a crook and a cheat. And yet, he still had a nerve to want to see Jesus. You know why? Because the first rule of getting better is you can't get stuck on where you've been, who you are, or what you got. Because God got enough grace to cover your past. He got enough mercy to bless you anyhow. You standing next or sitting next to some treacherous people. But hasn't God been good in your life? Hasn't God blessed you where you thought you didn't deserve it? 
Real greatness is not in who I am. It's in who he is. Real greatness is not how much I do. It's in how much I trust. Real greatness is not how far I can run. It's how much I can hold on to where God is taking me. You don't believe me? Rahab, the prostitute, is our great example. Um, don't you worry about where you've been to be a blessing. Rahab was in the red light district. Bible says so. That means she was turning tricks every night. Matter of fact, she had a stable full of women. But when her chance came to get God, and please don't look at me crook-eyed about, about uh, Rahab. Come on, with your bad self. With your nasty self. Think about what you did. Some of us did what Rahab did and didn't get paid for it. I'm only saying, we were practical, practicing fornicators. I know, I'm going off my script right now, so let me move on. So what happened to Rahab is, she decided, I heard there's a God who want people like me. I heard there's a God who will forgive me. And it said that Rahab let the spies come in, trusted God. And you know what happened? When the walls fell down, her house stood. Now quiet as it's kept, I need to tell you, the only reason that you're sitting here and millions of people have gotten the coronavirus, somehow it's only been the grace of God you have escaped it. So when the walls came down, your house did not fall. Matter of fact, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I believe it's because God's wings were covering you. Now, I'm not saying the folk that got the coronavirus ain't saved. That's what, that's what crazy people say. I'm just telling you, you thank God when he does provide mercy and grace in your life. So that's what you got to realize is that God is letting us know that, first of all, when you want more, you got to not worry about where you are. And then he had one more problem. He said he wanted to see Jesus, but he couldn't get in for the press. So the press represents the crowd. So I got to first tell you, press rhymes with mess. I got to deal with the people who actually run around having pity parties. Just because you saved don't mean you ain't going to deal with no mess. Your children going to be messy. Your marriage going to be messy. Your money going to be messy. Your health going to be messy. That's the reason you got a God. I wish I had a church person here. That's why God said, trust me, when you got a mess. But here's what Zacchaeus' problem was. His problem was he couldn't see because of the people he was little. So the Bible says people was his problem. Some of you, people are your problem. If you got friends, all they could do is point out to you your shortcomings and what can't happen. You ought to leave those friends alone. Find you some friends that'll tell you God is able. That'll tell you God can do it. You know what I'm talking about. You got a friend right now. Every time she come over, John, I don't know how you do it. I don't know, you go through this all the time. I'm telling you, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. As soon as she starts saying that, walk them to the front door and tell them, I know you couldn't do it. Now get out my house. I need somebody that's able to tell me, I got a God who can bless me. I got a God who is able. And the final thing is you gotta face, you gotta face the fact that you look. Somebody said, I don't want, this is what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't have problems and think they're going to go away. No. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew the fiery furnace was real. Daniel knew the lion's den was real. Yet, it did not stop them from praying and trusting God. All I'm saying is wherever you are, come on, man, come on, sir. Keep getting on your knees till God brings a breakthrough in your life. Let's move on. So the next point is you got to also, watch this. Not only must you want more, you must want to see God's power. Look what the text says. He couldn't see Jesus, so he ran ahead of the crowd. Uh-oh, I just messed up. All my folk who come out for worship, but you're doing something else, you better hear me. Listen, he ran ahead of the crowd. You can't be like the crowd and think you're going to get supernatural blessings. You can't be, I mean, you're comparing yourself to other people. Man, you might be greater than who you're comparing yourself to. All I'm saying is anybody who got blessed did what Zacchaeus did. You know what he did? He ran and climbed a tree. He ran ahead of the crowd. He wasn't ashamed. He said, I got a, what, what does it mean? Okay, I'm going home. I'm tired. Everybody going home. I'm going home. That's why you can't get a supernatural blessing. You got to pray more. You want the blessing? Read more. You want the blessing? Go through more. You don't believe me? Look at Job. 
Job had to go through. But he held on to God and he got double when he came out. Some of you want the blessing, but you're not willing to do anything for it. Zacchaeus said, I'm running better than everybody else ran. If I got to pray, 7 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 7 o'clock again. I want my blessing. Is there anybody that wants their blessing that bad? Come on, let's stay with the story. So he ran ahead, climbed the tree. Here's the meat. Here's the meat. Here's the meat. He climbed the tree. He did something that a dignified tax collector shouldn't have done. People was going to laugh at him. Some of us can't get a blessing because we worry about people laughing at us instead of praising God. He, he, he ran and climbed the tree. I ain't climbing no tree. I heard you. I ain't going out there in that hot sun. I heard you. I ain't going to pray again. No, I can't. All, every time you say you're not, you miss your opportunity to go up higher in the Lord. Let's close this thing. Why? Because there is a payoff. What is the payoff? Look at verse 5 in the text. Verse 5. Look at it. I want you to see it. It says, when Jesus got to the place... There's four payoffs when you get strong enough to climb a tree. Here's the first one. Jesus initiates contact with you. God has been waiting on you to get up the tree so he could find you. <laughs> God said, you've been praying every week. You've been coming to church, but you won't do anything different. You got to learn how to climb a tree. Not only that, not only must you go up higher. The second thing in that text, it says, Jesus looked up. Nobody ever looked up at Zacchaeus. What Jesus was telling Zacchaeus is, you're worth something to me. I chose you. I called you. I'm going to bless you. Payoff is, once Jesus looks up when you're in the right place, he lets you know what your destiny is. The third thing that happened, watch this. He told Zacchaeus, he called him by name. I don't know if that do anything for you. But when I, when I recognize the God of the universe, the God of all things, is sitting up there calling my name. I'm imagining a school of angels, and I believe God went over there and said, uh, I need you to go down and touch James Duncans. God said, there's billions of people in the earth. Why would you call my name? He said, because I know your name. Can you let somebody know God is waiting for you to climb a tree? I dare you to say to yourself, God knows my name. Wow! And the third thing, the fourth thing that happened, here go to pay off. Fourth thing that happened, he said, Zacchaeus, I must go to your house. Back up. Look, back up. Rewind for a minute. Jesus went to Jericho and he just told Zacchaeus, the reason I came, it was already preordained. I already had your blessing. I was just waiting on you to climb a tree. Now that you're up the tree, I must go in and deliver your blessing. You don't hear it. Here's what I'm trying to tell somebody. The, the blessing is already there waiting on you. You just got to do what Zacchaeus did. Last point. They're looking at me. They're giving me the signals. Last point. It says, Zacchaeus came down with joy. Automatically. As soon as you touch God. The same grumpy man was now joyful. Isn't this something that one touch from Jesus can bring joy in your life? Isn't this something no matter what you're going through now, if you get one touch? He ran down. He was not the same insecure little man. He was not the same crook. He was not the same cheater. Said he told Jesus, Here's what he did. He said, I want my blessing now. What do I have to do? He said, I know I climbed a tree, but I'm ready to go further. So he said, I'm giving back everything I cheated. Half of what I own, I'm giving back to the poor. Somebody don't realize, if you want a blessing, you got to do some action. Go home and fast. Go home and pray. Go home and do what you never did before. Tell God, I'm ready for my blessing. And then the Bible says, Jesus said, because you did, salvation has come to your house right now. Listen to me as I close. Zacchaeus, I know salvation, this whole text to my theologians out there is about salvation of Zacchaeus. Because he wasn't saved through this. We're using the principles of his actions. 
But I looked in the Greek lexicon and I found out that the word salvation is the word so, so, ho. It means holistic salvation. It means that God said, once I save you, that's not the end. That's just the beginning of the miracle of this ride. So what does it mean? Sozo means healing. Sozo means restoration. Sozo means a deeper life. Sozo means your need supply. So all I'm telling you today is, you, it's, you want some changes? It's time to climb a tree. Watch this. Want more for your life. Want to see God's power. And want it now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Hallelujah. Somebody needed this message today. You had settled for a place that you know God didn't tell you to be in. When an unsaved tax collector can put enough in his heart to say, I want God with the holistic of holisticness of your salvation, God wants to give you more. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, there's somebody here not saved. Today, salvation is coming to you. Bow your head and pray this with me. Say, Lord God, I thank you that you gave me this chance. Right now, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe you died. I receive you today. And because of it, say this loudly. I am saved. Say, I am changed. Now, if you prayed that prayer, all of you who joined us, all of you who heard this, your life just took a change. We're going to close right now. Don't forget. Our Wednesday night live service is going to be on. Don't forget that you can go online and check out our YouTube channel. Please go to our channel. Subscribe. Help us. We're building our YouTube channel. Go to our Facebook and go to our website and see the exciting things this ministry is doing. God bless you. I'll see you Wednesday night at our live Bible study. Have a great week.